A few weeks ago, I did a video covering two of three of the snakes that we got in. Those an obese king snake, a very underweight piebald ball python, and an even more underweight albino ball python. I promised that the next video would be a video on the king snake, which will be this, and that I would do an update on the others, and then I kind of took forever. So we're gonna start off with the two updates on, that are not about the king snake. So if you're just here for the obese king snake, you can skip to this time code, but first let's go over the other two. Here is the piebald ball python, a very cool morph that uh, you don't, s I mean, I guess you see them every day because like a lot of people like them now, but each and every one is going to have a lot of different coloration uh, down the body where you basically have these chunks of like design. I've always kind of called it like a printer running out of ink as the ball python comes out and I've always really liked it. Um, I used to want one really badly, but it was completely out of my budget and uh, there's one here now. Honestly, I, I don't have any strong desire to keep it myself. I have three ball pythons myself, a yellow belly, a yellow belly Mojave, and then the uh, bumble, the yeah bumblebee spider ball python, which only one of mine I actually picked out, like Sunny, who I, I bought. And then the yellow belly Mojave and the spider were given to me. Those were not morphs I would have bought anyway, especially the spider. That's aside the point. My point is I don't really care about morphs that much. <laughs> like, I think they're cool. I think they're very interesting. I like to learn about them. And obviously they're important when you're selling animals, but um, normal ball pythons are just fine as well. This is a pretty cool dude, though you have to, I mean, I have to admit, a, w a white snake is pretty weird to see. So this guy was shipped to us by someone that had a lot of trouble getting him to eat, and he was very rapidly losing weight, and they were getting, obviously, very concerned. So we felt comfortable. He was not at a point where it was dangerous to ship him. So they shipped him from somewhere in the US, I forgot where, to our house. And uh, we've been working with it ever since. From the very first time that we offered food, he immediately took, and he's been taking I believe every single week, which is pretty cool to see. Still an underweight snake, but definitely in the right direction. Um, and we have zero concerns at this point. So it was super underweight. It was like rapidly declining. Um, but other, other, like other than his weight, he still looks perfect. His eyes are super clear. He's active. He has his tongue just like flicks everywhere. He's very alert and he's pretty shy. He's not actually doing too bad right now, but he was pretty shy beforehand. Now you can see like when I kind of like move him around like that, you can see there is kind of that bit of loose skin. He's pretty strong. He's not the strongest snake, believe it or not. Like he does have strength there, but uh, you can still feel those muscles kind of building. The snakes eating really help their muscle mass grow because it takes effort to work it down their body. And uh, he's not a super active snake. He tends to spend a lot of his time in the cool hide or the cool side of his enclosure, uh, even though he does have those warm areas available. So I don't know why that is. That's kind of just, you see variation between each snake, which is why it's good to have that uh, that spectrum of temperature up and down. And then there is the unfortunate albino ball python. This one was also shipped to us, but if we knew the status of this albino, we would not have shipped it. It did not look this bad in images, which it can be hard to tell over pictures. Even in the video there, you can really just, like the video I did on the albino, you just could not tell how bad it was. Like, it's very different in person. And unfortunately, you might be able to tell since I don't have it with me, and unfortunately it did not survive. Uh, I never know how to break these kinds of things. I just like have to go for it. So I get way too excited with new <laughs> arrivals sometimes. I like to try and get videos out as soon as possible so that there can be like real time updates as, as the animal improves or in very rare cases declines. I did the video after I did like two or three feedings, I guess, of the animal. Now it was too weak to eat itself. It tried to eat the very first time and it could not open its mouth. It would just essentially strike with its mouth closed. It wasn't even a strike, it was just like a tap on the rodent. Uh, these were little just like frozen thawed fuzzies or something. So what we ended up having to do was, well, the goal was to do an assist feed, but even that wasn't enough. So we essentially had to force feed it down the entire snake. A lot of people said that you should do a tube feeding instead of a force feeding. Both are very stressful processes in their own ways because that tube does have to reach very far down and the snake is not gonna be chill with that. So I am more comfortable doing a force feed with the animal. So it happily, well, happily, I think, I think it appreciated taking those first few rodents, uh, even if it didn't really want to, but you could immediately start telling the difference. It immediately began gaining weight. And it was after these couple feedings that I felt comfortable doing the video. Uh, it was, it had a pretty just like calm life overall. It would just stay in the enclosure. I would take it out for that one video and then we would take it out to assist feed at very small rodents. I think every, about every five days or so, uh, to a point where it's not stressful and overdoing it, but at the same time to where it's not like gonna have enough time to keep losing weight to the point of starving itself because it was extremely close. We've had ball pythons 
that are healthier than that and still have zero hope of surviving. So that's why I was so caught off guard that it was even alive in the first place. A few days after I did that video, uh, there was that kind of lump at the back of the snake that you could see. Usually that means that the animal's about to poop. And uh, at first I didn't want to mess with it. Uh, and then I did a quick soak to try and see if it would help get it out. And that still did not work. I, what I realized is it didn't even have the strength to poop. It was just basically backed up for who knows how long. Because we hadn't had the animal for super long. We had kept it like separate from all the an other animals for a number of weeks. That was before I did the video. Um, because we couldn't get it to eat and then I took it here and started working with it. And so then I decided I would actually help push it through. I can display on this dude. I was very lightly just starting to rub down where it started with about this much pressure. And there was no strength for it to hold its cloaca closed. Hopefully that doesn't... I don't know what the less, least gross way to describe this, but we are talking about a snake, like a dying snake poop in here, so be warned. And very slowly it just started coming out of the cloaca immediately. Uh, it was just normal poop. It looked pretty normal. There was a urate starting off. That's like the white chalky stuff. And overall it seemed pretty average. I kept very slowly pushing. And then once the final mass came out, it was just fluid, like a lot of fluid. It was clear fluid, which I've never seen in a snake. And uh, as the fluid essentially just came out, like flowed out, uh, it was very deflated. I don't know what, how else to describe it. It was, the front half looked pretty normal. The back half was just shriveled, like even more than before. And it turns out that was not fat. That was not calories in there. It was just pure fluid. I let it rest for a good few days. And then just a random morning, it was no longer alive. It just, had just randomly died overnight. Not randomly, I mean, Obviously, this was somewhat expected. I, I, was, I just became really helpful because uh, once I did the video, I was like, it's definitely on the right track. It's gaining, it's taken like three or four meals. It took another two meals after that video and it was not able to poop, but it wasn't looking too bad. And then once we helped it, it just started pouring out fluid. I don't know what the fluid is. I don't know how else to describe it. It was just clear. There was no scent to it. It was just liquid. So that's the unfortunate ending to the albino. I, I don't know, I can't decide if I regret doing the video when I did, like maybe I should have waited just so that it's not as like stressful for viewers to kind of be having to wait in real time, but maybe that's interesting. I don't know, you can like, should I do real time videos or should I actually wait until I have a good idea? Like looking back, it probably would have been better if I had waited until it was doing super well and then filming the whole process and then kind of compiling it into a video, so. I don't know, I don't, I, I don't think I regret how I did it because it was so interesting to show uh, in real time how it was doing. So that is the very disappointing albino update. Now let's move on to the other update that this video is actually for. That is the obese king snake, an issue that we have not seen, but is much more nice to deal with than dying shriveled up animals. Uh, they, they, because they have a bunch of calories. Like if they're obese for a long time, then yeah, that can cause long-term issues, but it can kind of help in some ways. It's a little more insulation and they can go longer without food and they're not l like lacking as much nutrients. This albino king snake is one that we actually got off of Craigslist. We know we knew it was obese before we got it because we saw pictures and we we're like, yeah, we can fix that. And um, so it turns out they were feeding it. I think, I think her, the word she said was, I can only get it to eat once a week. I don't know what it was eating, and only like once a week, that's good. Like for an adult king snake, it could probably go 10 to 14 days even, especially based on this individual. So it sounds like she was feeding it as if it was like a dog or something, just like, here, take more, take more, like as much as she physically could. And that resulted in a lot of extra fat. And it looks kind of hilarious. Like on the internet, especially, it's very easy to just kind of laugh and giggle at obese animals, which yeah, that's true. But also they're, they're literally dying. So you gotta take it seriously at the same time. So the question is, how do you fix an obese snake? What do you actually do? Uh, well, to start off, you're obviously going to feed it less, um, but you don't want to starve it at the same time. You don't want to just immediately take all that food away until all the weight's gone. Uh, you want to kind of keep it consistently healthy so it is getting nutrients and it's not just fat. At the same time, it's a snake. They're not that active. So you need to get it to be active. So we're in the right direction, but it's still pretty fat. Like this is the shots I'm showing you because it's actually not at this location right now, but uh, it's 
somewhat similar. It's looking a little better. Uh, it has lost weight, like it has lost grams, but it's gonna take a good little while. So it's being taken out almost daily just to move around the room, just getting that exercise, like working off those calories like any animal would. Uh, it's eating a very small meal every other week instead of like an average size meal every week or every 10 days, just something tiny to keep it going every couple weeks so that, you know, there's, there's less going in. It's pretty simple overall. I've only seen, we've had I think three obese animal. I mean, not even obese, this one's obese. We then had an overweight pinstripe, which we still have. Uh, that one was pretty easy. Uh, ball, I mean, ball pythons, they really retain weight, so it took a long time for it to lose it. Uh, but it's okay, it's easy to deal with. And then my boa constrictor, Rosie, was kind of a similar deal. She was fed every week when boa constrictors, adult boa constrictors can be fed every like four to eight weeks, depending on how large the meals are and how large the snake is. But uh, she's being fed every week as well. So the obese king snake is our third very fat snake. And it's just so weird. The feeling of it is just, uh, so it's not, it's like squishier than a sausage. It's like, I don't, it's just flat, it's just squish. And you can just see all the like crinkles around the edge with literal fat rolls on the snake. And it's like, how did they not notice that? I don't know. Um, I guess if that's your only snake, you're like, oh, it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to justify it, honestly. So the obese king snake is definitely on its way, on its weight loss journey. It's just gonna keep eating exercise every couple days, if not every day. And it'll still be eating, which it has happily eaten, believe it or not, like who knew that this obese king snake would eat? Oh, we thought it would starve itself. No, it, it likes to eat. Uh, we just gotta really be careful with it and make sure it gets the nutrients it needs without completely overdoing it. Those are the three snake updates. The piebald ball python is doing perfect, as perfect as it can be, looking really good, getting um, its weight up there, becoming a lot more comfortable with people and uh, it still has a little ways to go, but no concerns here. Then the albino ball python, which, I mean, I, we just had a long talk about that, so an unfortunate ending. Uh, I, uh, wow, I was gonna say I wish it was a different ending, but you didn't need me to tell you that. <laughs> but uh, there, I guess there aren't many lessons to learn from it, because it was just so far into dying when we got it. It was, uh, my expectations were just ridiculously high and there's really nothing, like, a vet couldn't have done anything in that case. Like, oh, let's, let's get an x-ray. Oh, wow, it's cool, what do you know? It's underweight, feed it. I don't, it, again, there's, there's two feedings which we have that option if needed. It's really a case-by-case -case basis of what the best way to do it is. Um, and I feel like we did make the right decisions. Uh, obviously we can review everything and like get more professional recommendations um, and everything and help from others. Hopefully this does not arise again, but let's face it, we know it will because we take some messed up animals. Uh, and then the obese king snake is just kind of funny because I'm not concerned about it. It's just interesting. The question is how flabby it's gonna be when it's lost the weight. Where's the skin gonna go? Is it gonna keep shedding? Like I have so many questions. Is it is gonna, it's just gonna be like flopping, like it's gonna move and there's just gonna be this like sag of big bag of skin under. I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe the skin will shrink as well, but the scales can't shrink. So it'll be interesting. So it's, Two thirds of the updates are good. Um, not as high as I'd like, but hopefully you found it interesting regardless. And uh, there's definitely some more interesting animals coming in that'll make for some cool videos. So thanks for your patience with this update. And uh, thanks to all the members for supporting the videos and everything. Uh, you can get early access videos like this one. And my camera battery went out and I don't have another battery. As I was saying, <laughs> you get early access to videos, a uh, private discord server and stuff like that. So thank you. For this, and I'll finally start actually live streaming soon, so there's that. Uh, but here's the pied. So, hopefully you enjoyed. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching the update.